here. Yes, the online, the online edition. And the dr drum off series, drum off series, kicking it at Kubik's crib, and we have Andy Sutton in with us. Andy, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Very nice, very nice. First time I met Andy was today. Yes. It's kind of like a Facebook thing we kind of got connected with, and you, we have a lot of mutual friends as well. Yeah. Well, isn't Facebook like the uh, the official way to meet people now? You know, when Facebook first came out, my wife's like, "You got to get on Facebook. Got to get on Facebook." And this, I don't know when this was, a long time ago. Yeah early i don't know, maybe 2010 something like that or whatever and i said i don't want to, i don't want to do it well, it's stupid you know it's all just stupid but i'm glad i did and i know a lot of people are afraid of facebook yeah and i know a lot of people spend way too much time on facebook right but uh it being it did kind of help me network back with some people i wanted to see again and some people i don't want to see which you don't have to answer everybody yeah People always say, I gotta get off Facebook. I can't. Well, don't go on it all day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I use it more or less as a tool yeah. for this show, for my radio show, for drum, drums and things like that, drumming and things. Well, I think that's what it is. You know, yeah. if it, it's either you use Facebook or you let Facebook use you. It's true. And a lot of people <laughs> get really absorbed in it and they just start posting anything. Look what I could do. Look what I could do. So, anyway, that's how I met you and that's how I met a lot of drummers recently that w or re have come back within this big circle of life yeah as you get older how old are you i'm 28 oh my god <laughs> i could be your grandfather <laughs> 20 i thought you were a tad older for some reason no. you seem mature oh well thank you i try uh, don't let it get to you though you can't get, you can't be too mature god what i do to be 28 again what was i doing when i was 28 uh, what are you doing when you're 28? Why don't you tell me that? Uh, well, I teach and I play. And that's about it. You know, I teach about 35 students a week. And then uh, last year I played 210 dates, I think. I've been doing that since like 2014 or so, since I was 24. So that's just been maintaining and trying to grow every year. And those are one-nighters? Uh, majority of them. Yeah, majority of them, yeah. Yeah, within the city you said you did some touring right is it like yeah. spot touring or solid tours like you go out for 12 weeks or? no spot touring oh. so like you know the longest ones i usually do are like two or three weeks at a time and then come back you know i do have a wife and then i do also uh oh you're married i didn't yes. know that oh yeah how long have you been married for about four years now actually my wife uh my wife is a photographer for weddings and she also works in the city oh that's um, cool and then her uncle is a traveling artist so she's always grown up around that and uh so she knows how it that is that whole kind of uh, nomad yeah lifestyle you well know? I'm very blessed I'm very lucky to have a wife who um, you know is on the same page with me and you know we uh, we do a lot of stuff together too That's same with so. my wife and I so uh, you're a Crown Point guy mm -hmm. Crown Point Indiana they have a square yep they have a square what goes on in that square? Any action there? They have the, is uh, the zombie club still there? Zombie club is still there, yeah. They have some stuff every once in a while. They're, the Crown Theater is going to be opening back up soon. I saw that. They were remodeling it in the old theater. They're going to... Yes, yeah. And, um, they're I keeping thought, it the same thing low-key, or is it going to be some highfalutin thing now? Uh, it's going to be uh, somewhere in between, I think. You know, um, I've been meeting with uh, Brad, the uh, guy who owns owns the theater now for about four months now and uh we've been talking about putting some acts in that theater when live acts up. yeah oh cool so uh, uh he's gonna have live acts he's gonna be doing uh showing some movies he's gonna be doing all kinds of stuff there so it'll be a lot of fun that kind of venue is good because i always tell bar owners around here and a lot of bar owners want to have bands and they, they want to have sports they want to have bands they want to have hockey things they want to have all kinds of things going yeah. on so yet they bring in a band and there are 75 screens and everyone's watching the sports, and the yeah. band's just sitting there fucking off. You know? Yeah. I, I feel, I ha yeah. always hated that. I said, if you want a band, then bring a band in. Right. And if you want a band, maybe build an area where they could feel comfortable playing, not just on the floor, maybe with a small system. Yeah, and, and that doesn't really do anything, I feel like, uh, to help the... I don't want to say local scene because it sounds so kitschy a little bit, you know, but, but it, it is to true. help the local music, <laughs> the, to the grow. local music I'm, acts, you know, um, and we're not, it doesn't have to be original acts, you know, but just w if you have a bar and stuff, I always tell them, you know, make sure you screen every band that comes in there to make sure that they're going to like put on a show for your customers. And that's one thing we've been doing with, uh, you know, we do a jazz brunch every Sunday at Region Ale from noon to three. And uh, we've been doing that for almost two years now there. And, um, uh, uh, I kind of took the idea, took some of the ideas a little bit from a uh, blues jam that I was a house drummer for for like four years, where um, 
you know, we bring a guest host in every week, a different guest, and it's somebody that is either from Chicago or is like coming through the area. Like we had Marty Salmon a couple weeks ago, Buddy Guy's keyboard player, that. Mm-hmm. and it was great. The regulars that see that in there that aren't usually there for the jam are always like really into it, you know, and mm-hmm. then they become part of our thing. When you do th- something like that consistently and you do it really well, really consistently, it will grow. You've been playing drums uh since i was 12 and this is all you do right now just drum yep oh that's good mm-hmm. you kind of made you kind of figured out a niche and made it work yeah it's hard to do that for some people you know i'm just uh kind of lazy <laughs> <laughs> maybe so, i'm just I mean, tired i'm old there, tired. but you know there's a difference between playing and running a business you know and a lot of people get those two things confused i think is why they can't make it work for them because they don't have the opportunity and then they can't fill that opportunity you know they they see playing music as like a a thing it was a way to express themselves but when you play music for a living and you expect somebody to pay you for it it's like you have to deliver a product yeah you, you got know? you have to cater see there's yeah. there's different ways of going about it i never went about it that way yeah so i was always stubborn bullheaded yeah that i wanted to do this right and you're gonna listen yeah and of course that doesn't fly in a lot and of places my goal is always just been to play with the best players possible and get that feeling of like i said that excited feeling of i don't know how this is going to turn out but i'm i want to be in the moment and i want to be playing you know Mm -hmm. that's that's always really been my goal you know so like it doesn't matter i like all i a lot of people say they like all types of music but like i really can i try to find something worthy in everything i hear do you like sound checks um I hate sound checks. I got to be honest with you. If the sound guy is good, yes. I did not used to like sound checks, but I last summer I invested in and a cheap pair of in-ear monitors just to try them out, you know, and then I've never I've been, used them. And it's it's been 
awesome. I don't have to worry about not being able to hear myself. You know, I get the exact mix I want every single time. So it, that's been that's been really nice. And everybody's every sound guy that I've had has been very accommodating. With you know, it, you should so. call him a sound engineer. I should. He, yes, he you're right. I'm sorry to all my sound, sound engineer guy. friends. I always say sound guy anyway. <laughs> I think the worst sound checks I, I've ever have done. And this is going back a ways. I used to play at CBGB's quite often. At one time in New York, I was in five different bands. Uh-huh. We were gigging a lot in all original acts. The sound guy there in the 80s was just this jaded, pissed off oh, that's the worst. guy. Hated that he was there. And I have to tell you, CBGB's had a beefy sound system. And the sound guy, he'd go, okay, let me hear the snare. Sna- oh, that's good. <laughs> I mean, it was like, you know, I hear the bass, good. I didn't even hit it. It's good. <laughs> he was such an asshole. The most important thing to me is that the the band sounds good and that I sound good. That's the main thing, you, you know? know. And I, you know, sometimes um, even in recording, I've done a lot of recording in a mic in every drum. I understand it to get yeah. close mics, but most of the times, so many times in studios, we'd be micing close mics and faraway mics and room mics and a uh, mic in a bathtub at the end of some hallway down an elevator shaft, you know. 
And honestly, I, I record upstairs and I get pretty good sounds. Mike and some, well, these drums here that we just played, three, yeah. mic, three mics. Depends. I use four. Depends on the situation, but I like that natural situation. sound a little more. Oh, yeah. You know, and I. I think a lot of gigs you could get away with getting good sound if you got a good sound engineer with just an overhead and a bass mic and a snare mic. Well, listen to those old uh, when you when you watch these old TV shows and Buddy Rich was playing or whoever it may be, they had one maybe two mics on it. Mm -hmm. You know, a nice condenser mic or something yeah. like that would take care of the whole show. I am not a sound engineer, so they you know I I respect anybody who knows how to get what they get out of their out of their system and knows what they need and they can do it. Any uh, stories on the road, like kind of quirky things, bad things that happen, horrible things? <laughs> um, not really horrible things. You, you know, know, what could go wrong does go wrong. There was one time when I was on the road with Vu Davis out of Aurora, and we were in Georgia, and he always carried a camper with him. He took a camper. What do you mean? He it's carried a, a camper? You mean he brought his he, camper he, truck? He, he dragged a camper with his trailer. Oh, all right, yeah, gotcha. A camper right. trailer. Right. And, you know, the, the it was so hot on the highway, the tire blew out. We had to replace the tire on the side of the road type of thing I, i'm pretty easy going when it comes to the road you know i just try to i you know i try to just be there to be to be an employee as well you know because you know and you hear this from a lot of guys that are on the road with major major acts is like you know when you go on the road and you're you're in a bus you can't just be a good at what you do you have to be a, you have to be good easy to get along with everybody has their own thing that they do you know one guy may cook really well one guy may just provide that comic relief or you know the it's very much the same way of a chemistry in the band you need like all these different personalities right. that just gel together that make it work got it when i think back um, i toured solid for a good almost 10 years and um I don't think I could do it again. I honestly, maybe I could do it in spurts, two, three weeks. Yeah. Yeah, the the whole touring thing, it, it could be good, it could be bad. I don't care what level you're on. If you're on a really high level, I have a friend who works with some very big bands, two years at a time going out on tour, gets paid well. Yeah. But they, he just, he can't stand it you know, yeah. because he's always gone. So it takes right. its toll and uh, everyone thinks it's glamorous when it's really it's, not. It's hard to balance everything too, you know, when it comes to business stuff. I think the hard part about me for going on the road for such long periods of time is having students and then you want them to keep developing and you want to keep that here going. That's a big yeah. part of your, your income and, you know, it's or it's half your income or whatever you know so you have to keep this going while at the same time doing this other stuff to progress your career and then you know mm -hmm. it's a it's a juggling, juggling act sometimes yep. right yeah. there any groupies that we should know about or your wife just my wife <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, they don't approach the drummer they want they want everybody come on they i used want, to get all the chicks they want, they, they want the guitar player and the bass oh, player. Not, not, I'm, not, I'm not the bands like, i was I'm, in i'm usually like so focused like i'm like all right, get it set up. You know, like let's play this gig. You know, or let's do this. And right when we get done, like all right, time to tear down. You know, like so. Like I, tr I maybe I'm just not approachable. That could be the thing. You know, because I'm there. You look menacing, maybe. I, yes. I hope not. <laughs> Andy, how many bands are you in? Can you name all the bands and tell the folks all your bands just quickly? Well, I've been uh, Liz Mandeville's drummer since 2014. Um, she's a blues hall of fame artist. I have played with Foo Davis out of Aurora. Um, I was playing quite a bit with uh, Scott Ellison out of Tulsa for blues artists. Um, right now I am with Stop Drop Rewind. Then I have a company that also provides music for uh, different events and things and we have the Uptown Dance Band which is a top 40s band. What's the name of your company? Uh, Sutton Music Co. Sutton Music Co. Yeah. So you can look that up if you're looking for any acts. We have a 17 piece jazz ensemble called Calumet Ridge Jazz Ensemble. Uh, we have the band that plays every Sunday at uh, Regionale, you know, and then just other bands that, I'm sorry if I overlooked anybody, but other bands that uh, uh, hire me here and there. You know, uh, Pearls Mahone I've been playing with. She's a country artist out of the city. Um, I'll give a shout out to her. Um, I'm sorry if I forgot anybody. And just, you know. You don't have to apologize. I got out of bed today, so that was one yeah, thing I got done. That's great. I was sitting on the couch for a while, too, but I got off that when I, you came I'm over. Kind of, as a drummer, you have to get used to the fact that your drums are not going to sound the same to you where you're sitting no, never. that they do out in the front house. There's a thing, too. If you're not going through, um, I've done gigs before where we, we play in a room that doesn't have a great PA. You play the room. Yes. Or if you're going through a, a PA, you have to play to the PA. There's certain stages I was on where I couldn't even hear anything. Yeah. I could hear them when I'm by myself, but when we started playing with the band, the place filled up with people. Yep. I'm hitting it. 
Mic, I, I can't hear. And My snare the, drum's right here, and, and I can't hear. Because the amps are all directional, and your drums are omnidirectional. You know, I'm I'm always been a person to really focus on what the audience is experiencing at the time, because you know you don't want to hurt the audience with your. Oh, I volume. throw sticks, at and you want to. <laughs> <laughs> and you and you want them to be able to hear you at some level, you know. You want to be able to hear the nuances of what you're doing, so that they can enjoy the music and they mm-hmm. can feel it, you know. Your best Robert De Niro. Oh, I do. I, Just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not good. Give with it a shot. At all. Uh, <laughs> I got nipples. Can you, you milk me? N- you got n- <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. You know what I hate. I hate those breaks in songs where you go, everybody clap. <laughs> I can't stand that. When I'm at a concert, I say, just finish the damn song. I don't want to get up and clap. I want you to, I don't need that 10 I, minute thing. Don't, everybody. <laughs> don't you hate that? I just, I hate that. Okay, just a few questions, and we're going to wrap it up here with Andy Sutton. Favorite lunch meat? Um, roast beef. Roast beef. Salami. Beer, can, bottle, of draft? I don't drink beer. You don't drink beer? I don't really drink, yeah. You don't drink? Yeah, I know. Oh, man, the I, wine? I, I just never got into it. Never you know, got into I, it. I wish I, I wish I did, because I always wish I would, like... I had that thing to talk about when everybody's talking about their craft beers they like. Oh, I don't know any of that. I, I just, I still miller like. I wish like, I had you know. that thing to talk about, you know, but I don't. Ah, I you should see my liver. Andy, thank you so no much problem. for coming in. <laughs> Appreciate it. We got to jam together a little bit, and then now you're going to make it out to Region Ale for your uh, jam session. Yeah, come sit in sometime. Thing. I'd love to, and I appreciate you coming by. Andy Sutton, ladies and gentlemen. And see you next thank time you. right here on the Drum Up Series, kicking at Kubrick's crib right here in the function. Thanks so much.